Hello, my name is Alexis and welcome back to another episode of Essentials with Alexis, where I do the work so you don't have to. On this channel, I test out beauty and lifestyle hacks and tricks so that I can help you reach your goals efficiently with no BS. Today's video is going to be on feminine hygiene. I didn't have an older sister or a person I could look up to to teach me the things that I'm about to tell you. And I wanna be that for you. I wanna make sure you have all of the tools that you need in order to have the freshest, cleanest, and really the healthiest, meow meow, as you can. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. First, we're gonna talk about underwear. Lacy underwear are cute, and they are fun to wear on occasion, but consistently, you should be wearing cotton underwear. And this is why. It's breathable, it's going to be moisture wicking, and it's not going to irritate the area. In addition to that, I would say to not wear super tight clothing for longer than you have to. Maybe for a couple hours, you're going out, whatever, being cute, that's cool, that's fine, that's whatever. But on a day-to-day -day basis, do not be wearing super tight clothing, especially in the groin area. Not only is it incredibly uncomfortable, it also promotes bacterial infections and irritation and sweating, then it really needs to be in that area, so let's just not. Now, I know a lot of people prefer to go commando sometimes, which I think this is great, especially at night, um, to just let everything breathe. However, our kitty cats are self-cleaning ovens. With that being said, there are always going to be things coming out and that is completely normal. Discharge is completely normal. When discharge is abnormal, that's when you need to worry. When it has a foul odor, or a weird color or anything like that, obviously go to the doctor and just make sure everything is good. But because our bodies are self-cleaning ovens, you don't wanna just have no underwear on, like it's just gonna be like on your leg and you know, it's just, it's again, not comfortable and it's gonna be more moisture in the area than there needs to be, which can promote bacterial infections and whatnot. It's, it's kind of a delicate area, you know what I mean? It's, it's delicate, so you gotta treat it like it is. This is one of my favorite tips and something that completely changed my reproductive health. And that's going to be to take a probiotic, specifically a probiotic that supports vaginal health. My favorite is the Garden of Life one, which is dairy-free. If you don't have access to getting a probiotic, I would recommend eating more fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurts, and kombucha. Why is a probiotic helpful for your downstairs area? Well, there are two types of bacteria, right? There's good bacteria, and there's bad bacteria. At any given time, our bodies have the natural ability to balance out these bacteria to make sure that there's more good than bad and to make sure everything is running properly. Probiotics help elevate the good bacteria levels in your intestine, um, in your gut, and your gut is super important for um, your mood, it can help with depression, anxiety, all of those things, digestion. But then it also helps with your vaginal area because it is always going through some cycle of cleaning out. When you have a higher elevation of those good bacteria, you're less sensitized, you smell better down there, and your discharge is normalized. Because your downstairs area is really sensitive, your pH balance can get thrown off by a lot of different things. I personally had issues with this um, growing up and I didn't know what was going on, what was causing the issue, but as soon as I started taking a probiotic, all of those issues dissipated and I've been more regular ever since. So like I was just talking about, our pH levels can be thrown off because it is a very delicate system. And things that are going to throw it off, which you should not be using, are gonna be scented soaps and laundry detergent or dryer sheets, all of those things, because they have scents in them, they can throw off your pH balance and it sucks. And this is including bath bombs. Don't wanna use any bath bombs that can throw off your pH. To combat that, I would suggest unscented soaps, unscented laundry detergent, things for sensitive skin always, um, because that area is really sensitive. Included in the scents department is also going to be tampons and pads. I know a lot of the brands, they will actually put um, scents to combat the, you know, the iron smell from you know, our, our blood and everything, um, but that will actually throw off your pH balance and can make things smell worse down there. So you also wanna stay away from scented, anything when it comes to feminine products. And pads and tampons um, tend to be bleached. So I tend to steer towards organic 
uh, tampons, pads, or I will use a Diva Cup, which is medical grade silicone. I know it can be kind of intimidating, but I would recommend it to anyone and I've had a really positive experience from it. Not only is it less irritating, my cramping has gone down significantly and I feel like my period um, is shorter. And I don't know if that there's any science behind that, but I just feel like when I wear it, I don't have as many issues um, prolonging my period. And once you get more comfortable with putting it in and making sure it's correctly positioned, I feel like it's less intimidating. It's also going to last longer. I think you can wear them for like up to 12 hours, which is pretty impressive. And I will be linking all of these products in the description on my Amazon list if you guys are interested in using any of these products. Here is a great tip. I actually learned this from a fellow YouTuber. Her name is McKenna Walker. Um, her channel's great. You guys should check it out. And the tip is to wipe your butt crack and your armpits with either glycolic acid or witch hazel. So the science behind this, this is just odor prevention, is the witch hazel is actually an astringent and it's gonna kill any bad bacteria which is gonna cause that odor. And glycolic is great for cell turnover, which will help with making sure that the area exfol is exfoliated and there's not all this extra dead skin which is gonna cause more bacteria. And it will also help if you have any discoloration because it's gonna also help with that cell turnover. So it's kind of a win-win here. Stay fresh all day and get rid of any discoloration. It's a no-brainer. Another thing you can do for odor prevention is going to be chlorophyll drops um, or fenugreek, which is awesome. Those are both uh, natural supplements. Chlorophyll is made from plants, but it helps a lot with odor prevention. And some people claim to use it and not have to wear deodorant. I haven't had that experience, but I definitely have noticed that my natural odor is a lot less when I do drink it. And you just put it inside of your water and drink that like once or twice a day and voila. You're odorless. Fenugreek is an Ayurvedic herb that is used for a lot of different things, beauty related. But people that take it tend to have like more a sweet, like maple-y smell. If you're into that, take fenugreek. And I do wanna say this clearly so that you don't feel like you're weird or feel like something's wrong with you. Because I know when I was younger, I had all of these ideas of what a woman should be and how we should smell and how we should taste and all of these things. But I'm here to tell you that your vagina is not meant to smell like flowers or taste like candy. That's not a thing. So when I'm talking about odor, of course, naturally everybody has pheromones and like a scent, but there are gonna be things that create odor, um, you know, like sweat and bad bacteria. So when I say odor prevention, I want to make sure that I clarify that it is for the sweat and the bad bacteria. With that being said, there are things that you can do to again prevent that odor but to also um, make sure that you have like a naturally good like scent to you and that's going to be mostly internal there's external things obviously you can do which i just spoke about but internal things are going to be the most important because that's where everything starts you need to make sure you're drinking adequate enough water water consumption is really important for all aspects of beauty and health and how you eat will reflect on the inside and the outside if you're constantly eating junk food and fast food and nothing with nutrients in it, you're most likely gonna taste like battery acid. I hate to say it. So make sure you're eating your veggies and your fruits. I know a lot of people say that eating pineapple will you know, make you taste better and everything. And to be honest, I've never tested out that theory, um, but I know a lot of people stand by it. So that's another thing you could be doing. You could make sure that you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables and drinking your water and I, guarantee you your health is going to be reflected on the outside if you're taking care of what's on the inside. You should also be washing your hands and brushing your teeth, especially if you're about to engage in activities with a partner. Our mouths are breeding grounds for bad bacteria. That's why our breath stinks in the morning and that's why we have to brush twice a day. It's a moist, dark area and combine that with food and our natural enzymes, there's just a lot going on in there. You do not want to just jump into doing things 
and have somebody throw off your pH based off of what's going on in their mouth. So I would say that's another really important thing. Your hands also, we touch everything. So washing your hands before and after, whether that be by yourself or with a partner is really important as well. Touching back on the fact that we are self-cleaning ovens, there's going to be a lot of, like I said, discharge coming out and that is completely normal. However, it's not very comfortable to just sit in. Showering twice a day with, uh, you know, like unscented soaps or just water for that matter, I think is really important to the health of your um, vulva and vagina as well. To just make sure everything's freshened up and clean and comfortable. Showering often will also help if you have any issues with um, like body acne because you're not allowing the sweat to just sit in on top of your skin and all the dirt and grime from just the environment. Also, when showering, make sure to not clean with soap inside of you for any reason whatsoever. Obviously you can clean the outside portions with soap and everything, um, but just making sure that you're not going anywhere inside with that soap is super important because again, what did I say? It's a delicate balance and you don't want anything introduced to the area that's gonna throw off your pH. Sometimes people get thrown off just by you know, cleaning the outside, the vulva area. And those people tend to just use water in the area to make sure that it's clean, but without doing anything too extra. So if you're somebody with really sensitive area like that, I would just clean with water. Personally, I don't use like a feminine wash. I use an unscented soap or uh, something that doesn't have sulfates in it so that it's not extra stripping to the area and not really drying, which will also help to make sure everything is just balanced out. Now, if you get ingrown hairs, I am gonna give you a couple of tips for those as well. If you have to shave, which is not the best option, but if you have to shave and that's all you have access to, I am gonna say 100% use either a soap or a um, shaving cream in the area to make sure there's a lot of slip and you're getting a really even close shave. Big tip is to shave in the direction of your hair growth. Never go against the grain, ever. Even if that leaves you with like a little bit of hair still, it's well worth it over having a bunch of ingrown hairs that are gonna be really painful and embarrassing, uncomfortable, all of those things. So just shave in the direction of the hair growth and you won't have those issues or you won't have as many issues. Now if you wax, which I think is a better option if you had to choose between the two. Make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure to exfoliate. And this is important with both shaving and waxing, but especially waxing because you're ripping out the whole follicle and that is gonna have to come back. And if you're not exfoliating the area, it's just gonna be ingrown. It's gonna stay underneath the skin. So exfoliating is super important for both shaving and waxing, but waxing especially. If you wanna bypass having any issues and I know this from personal experience because I've tried waxing and I have tried shaving and I have tried laser hair removal. Laser hair removal is the best thing, one of the best investments I have ever made in myself. It has really been life-changing as far as comfortability and confidence. So I would completely advocate for getting laser hair removal. I know not everybody has this, the access to getting hair removal. You might be too young. Um, some people might keloid. Um, all of those things uh, are taken into account or it just might be too expensive. But if you are able and you have the resources for it, I would say 100% go for it. Laser hair removal is going to completely um, either eliminate the hair completely or eliminate the hair up to like 80%. I know for me, it was great because I was having a lot of hairs in one follicle. So there will be like three hairs in one pore and it was just, too much and I was getting ingrown hairs all the time. My areas weren't as even as I would like them to be. Getting laser hair removal completely changed the game for me. I can't recommend it enough. It's completely worth it. I go to Ideal Image, but I know there's other companies that offer their services and now they're at home kits. So that might be something to look into as well. But if you have really bad ingrown hairs, especially if you have like curly hair like me, that's like 
you know, kink hair or coarse hair and texture, I think that laser hair removal is something you should be saving up for 100%. Now, last thing that most people don't talk about, and I think it's mostly because people don't know, birth control is great for preventing babies, sometimes can be great for hormonal imbalances. There's some birth controls that are geared towards you know, acne prevention, but birth control absolutely destroys your gut health. And I wish this was something that somebody had told me a long time ago, because it would have saved me a huge headache, but your brain and your gut, that's why they say like, listen to your gut and like why you feel things in your gut. It's like your second brain. It has almost as many nerve endings as your brain, which is crazy to think about, which is why nutrition plays such a big impact on your health. But because your hormones are, you know, being regulated differently, it just goes in there and it just destroys that gut health and um, really makes you have imbalances. And it can cause a lot of people to have leaky gut, which is gonna in turn manifest in other ways um, in your body. Um, that can be acne, that can be uh, depression, anxiety, um, being lethargic, extra weight gain, all of those things. So while I think birth control can be useful for some things and it's obviously great for preventing babies, there are natural birth controls. I know there's IUDs that are hormone free. They're made out of copper and it still prevents you from having babies, which is usually what we go for it for, but it's not gonna cause all of the issues that come with having birth control. Also back to the hormone thing, can also cause you a lot of dryness in your area and it can also promote infection in the area. So I am gonna say 100% not worth it um, as far as like hormone-based birth controls. I'm gonna leave that up to you and you figuring out what's best for your body. But I know in my experience and my research, absolutely detrimental to you know your gut health and it, that plays a really important factor on the rest of your body's health. I think that is it. That's all I have for you today. I hope that this information is helpful. Please, 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 please feel free to ask me any questions. No, no limits, nothing's off the board in the comments or you can DM me if you want it, something a little bit more personal one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I will do my best to get back to you. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Essentials with Alexis and I will see you in the next one.